Hello and welcome back. In several of our previous lectures, we have looked at various cloud-based platforms and their major characteristics. In this lecture, I'm going to look at how you can leverage some of the characteristics that these modern platforms bring with them to address different types of business application scenarios. Let us first start by looking at what do we mean by platform characteristics. You can often call the aggregation of both the functional as well as non-functional properties of a platform, of a computer platform, as its characteristics. So for example, in case of virtualization platforms, software abstraction of hardware resources is one of its property, one of its characteristic. And similarly, if you look at infrastructure as a service as well as platform as a service platforms, you will notice that coarse-grained multi-tenancy is a characteristic of these uh, platforms. And similarly, you have limited control of underlying infrastructure that qualifies as a characteristic of a platform as a service. And similarly, location transparency is a characteristic of all the infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, as well as a software as a service uh, cloud platform. So in that sense, you can try to identify what are the characteristics that a particular platform carry. And these are just some of the examples by looking at detailed documentation, whether it is a design document or any features data sheets and other set of documents which are available from the vendor or the provider of different types of platforms, you can examine those documents or the available information from the vendors about those platforms to identify and figure out what are the important characteristics that a platform may be carrying. The major reason that these characteristics of various platforms are important is that they have an important bearing, important impact on all the guest applications that we build and deploy on such platforms. So from that standpoint, it is important that you as an architect, as a designer of these applications, you are aware of these characteristics so that you can leverage them or you have to mitigate them in case they are not working in your favor. So from that standpoint, it's important that you have a clear understanding of those characteristics and also you should be aware of how to identify those characteristics. And as I just uh, uh, said a second ago, typically these characteristics will be uh, some total of the functional features as well as any non-functional quality that those platforms may be offering. And you can identify such characteristics by looking at the feature set and other data sheets about various platforms. And in certain cases, you may also have to uh, look at either existing benchmarking data or you have to do yourself some sort of experiments, some sort of benchmarking on those platforms to validate or figure out further characteristics of such platforms. For example, in case of virtualization platforms, we have already seen in one of our previous lectures that there is some sort of performance interference which different applications might experience if they are deployed on some kind of uh, virtualization platform. For example, a hosted VMM type virtualization may exhibit a different type of performance characteristics than let's say an operating system based virtualization solution will offer. So from that standpoint, you may sometime have to do some experiment as well to validate and identify some more characteristics of these platforms. And once you have these characteristics identified, whether by looking at the available documentation about those platforms or by doing some sort of experimentation or benchmarking on them, then you can start looking at existing body of architecture knowledge. Let's move to the next slide. You can look at the existing body of architecture knowledge to identify the impact of those properties, those characteristics of the platforms on specific quality attributes. Normally, you would kind of reverse engineer this impact information by looking at existing body of architecture knowledge. Let's look at some of the examples. So if you notice, we have a particular tactic for building reliability into your application. So here it's indicated, so I have indicated uh, the quality attribute here as a, as a main entry in each cell in the left column. And underneath it in the parenthesis, I have listed one tactic, one possible tactic out of many to realize this quality attribute. Now, the description of this tactic say that on finding a failure, the system can be restored to a prior checkpointed consistent state. Now, the ability to do checkpointing is an important point here in this tactic. When I said you can reverse engineer by looking at the tactics, which is an existing body of architecture knowledge. 
So you can look at some of its key points and then try to look at the characteristics of the platforms that you are evaluating or the platforms at hand which you are trying to work on and see whether these abilities or whether these important uh, points in different tactics they are easy to meet or easy to support on those platforms. So depending upon the ease of supporting those important points you may determine the level of impact that the platform may have on that quality attribute for which you are looking at a particular tactic. So in this first example we see that state checkpoint is an important tactic for building reliability into a system. So any platform which easily allows you to do state checkpointing will favorably impact this quality attribute of reliability. Similarly for other quality attributes you have various tactics and then you can do similar kind of reverse engineering to figure out what is the impact of a particular platform on a given quality attribute like performance, reliability, security and so on. So this is the general method for you to look at the characteristics of different platforms and as I said before platforms may have several characteristics and you may have to have a cumulative impact index let's say or a, index, uh, or a cumulative impact score on a particular quality attribute. So you will typically look up all the important characteristics which are documented or known to you for a given platform and then look at the major tactics which are used to implement that quality attribute and then try to establish a relationship from the known architecture knowledge to arrive at the impact score for that quality attribute. And once you have identified this uh, impact information about several platforms and several quality attributes then this knowledge can be used to make further assessments of various platforms on a given set of quality attribute criteria. And we will see in the subsequent lecture how you will use this knowledge to assess different uh, computing platforms on a given set of quality attribute criteria. So let's look at some of the examples. So here are in the left column I have listed some of the characteristics of different uh, computing platforms and the impacted QA that we have determined. So software abstraction of hardware is a very important characteristic which is uh, primarily coming out of virtualization. And since most of cloud variants depend on virtualization for their for offering their services and implementation so this uh, impact is valid for all those platforms. So what it has is it impacts both disaster recovery DR is disaster recovery here and efficiency. Efficiency means how efficiently you are utilizing the computing resources. So both of these quality attributes are favorably impacted. A positive sign at the end means that the, the listed quality attributes are favorably impacted by this particular characteristic. And similarly programmatic and self-service provisioning, the second row here, that is a characteristic of let's say infrastructure as a service cloud. It impacts both deployability and scalability in a favorable manner. Because if you look at the tactics or the major tactics that you can use to implement scalability into applications, if you have some ability to program to provision more resources in a programmatic automatic fashion then you can add more resources without any human intervention. That means your scalability is easy to build on those platforms. Similarly for deployability that is how easily you can deploy a piece of code or an application on a given platform. So here again if you can provision the resources in an automated fashion without any human intervention that will be a desirable quality. So any platform that offers this kind of quality has a favorable impact on these quality attributes. And similarly we have already seen VM slash resource checkpointing and taking snapshots that will you can do similar analysis it will favorably impact the availability disaster recovery and reliability. And another important thing is lack of computing assets custody. In case of cloud platforms if you noticed the end user loses custody of the data assets. And obviously this adversely impacts the privacy and security as we have already seen in some of our previous lectures. An additional characteristic of the cloud based platforms is that there is a relative anonymity behind the subscription and usage. What it means is that when you subscribe for a cloud service for example you sign up for Amazon Web Services account to uh, subscribe to, to, to use their various services or for that matter Azure or Google cloud services. All they usually require is that you have a valid address and a credit card and a phone number usually they will call back to verify that somebody really has the phone number in possession and they verify your identity in a relatively simpler manner. 
and somebody may misuse it and from that standpoint it is having a negative impact on the overall security so similarly you can look at larger set of characteristics you can identify more characteristics uh, in fact they are already identified in some of the literature that exists today and there has been impact information already determined for those characteristics on various uh, quality attributes you can study those uh, but at the same time, you can also try to do more experiments or you can also try to identify more characteristics and see how it impacts different uh, quality attributes and in different scenarios. So you can make use of all this information to address different application development scenarios. So we'll look at some of those in subsequent falls where we try to make use of some of these characteristics to come up with some solutions for commonly occurring problems. For example, we'll look at how to implement failure recovery at a platform level. And similarly, we'll look at a few others like co-locating different tiers of an application on a single physical host, but still keeping them isolated and selective request slash computation transfer. So these are some of the tactics that we'll go over, which have been implemented by leveraging the characteristics that we identified of various cloud-based and virtualization platforms. So let's look at the first one. What it does is it tries to co-locate different tiers of a application that you might have built. One of the example scenario could be that you have an application which consists of multiple tiers, for example, an N-tier or a three-tier web application. And there is some data exchanged over the wire between tiers. And obviously this is uh, costly in terms of the communication overheads and also you have to manage different tiers, assuming that these tiers are typically deployed on separate physical hosts, which may be separated by a firewall and so on. So due to various reasons, often you will do this kind of a tiering segregation to achieve, to allow independent scaling of each tier, number one, or there could be security issues that may be forcing you to segregate these tiers. For example, you may be separating your database by putting a firewall in between. And the other tiers like your, let's say, application server or a web server may be in a uh, DMZ, like demilitarized zone, where uh, there is slightly less restriction on how somebody could access those uh, hosts. So these may be some of the reasons. So the requirement is that you still want to keep some isolation amongst the tiers of the application. But at the same time, you desire that the overheads, which, which are uh, coming along with these uh, isolation, on different physical hosts, uh, you want to minimize them. So how do you solve this problem? By using some of the characteristics that you know of, let's say, virtualization-based platform. So this is a logical view of the solution. So before I get into the details of this logical view, what we are using in this particular solution is the property of a virtualization platform, which offers physical resources as software entities. That is all the physical resources are abstracted out as software entities which are available for you to manipulate in a programmatic manner. So that is the main characteristic which underlie, which hold this whole solution together. The key point of this solution now is that the different tiers that your application may have, you host them as different virtual machines on the same physical host. In this case, I've just shown two virtual machines, but there may be more and this is your physical host the entire thing. Now at the bottom you have physical infrastructure and on top of it you may have a virtual machine uh, infrastructure, virtualization layer infrastructure here, which may be offering the physical resources as virtual entities. Like you have virtual disk pool or virtual memory pool and virtual CPU pool, which different virtual machines may be using. And this virtualization layer may be optimized or configured to exploit the co-location. So let's look at an example. Let's say you have an application which consists of three tiers or three components. One may be an application server and second could be a file server and third component may be a, let's say a PDF document converter. So your application is such that it has to take some user requests and based on the requests uh, uh, context, it may be trying to convert some files, let's say uh, HTML files into PDF files. And this kind of functionality it is uh, doing by using these components. Uh, you have an application server where your application is, is deployed. Let's say it's a web-based application where you upload, uh, let's say a bunch of HTML files or some uh, Word documents even, let's say, and it converts them, let's say into PDF files. 
so this application server has to receive the files put them on a file server from where a PDF converter component will pick up those files and tries to convert it and places it back in the results folder which whose link may be finally passed back to the client via the application server so if that kind of functionality is there and if you have segregated each of these tiers may be deployed on separate machines let's say then obviously there is a overhead of first of all managing these three physical hosts and then there is also a communication overhead when you try to send and exchange data these files between all of these tiers now what you could do is you could create three physical containers let's say you are using operating system based virtualization where you can use a union file system or an overlay file system to define a particular path where each of these tiers may be storing their files so it's behaving like a classical shared memory tactic but here in case uh, in this case we are using it at a virtualization virtual machine level where we have used union or overlay file systems to define a particular path where each tier places its uh, data both input as well as output so that they avoid the round trip through the entire networking stack since all these three virtual machines they are placed on the same physical host and sharing the same physical disk so the overheads are minimized at the same time since each of these is a separate machine the isolation is also maintained so in that sense you are able to address the issues that we earlier saw in the problem context that is you want you are still able to maintain the isolation as well as avoid the overheads of managing three separate hosts and more importantly avoiding the overheads of communication between these three tiers if they had been on the separate physical hosts let's summarize what we have seen so far in this lecture we started by looking at various characteristics and how to identify those characteristics for different computing platforms and then we also looked at how to determine the impact of those characteristics on different quality attributes and then we looked at how we can utilize these characteristics to address a particular type of business application scenario and in a subsequent lecture we'll continue from here where we will discuss further applications of these platform characteristics we'll try to solve different uh, application scenarios by leveraging these properties of the these characteristics of the computing platforms that is pretty much it for this lecture thank you